Welcome back to the New Year celebration and on top of Azobia TV, that's another Good Morning Ninja show where they do retrospect and in fact they look towards the future. As we don't enter 2020, so of course we need to look back to see some of the mistakes where our government don't make, some of the mistakes where our people don't make, some of the mistakes where you and I don't make in the past. So that this 2020 as we just step into RAM, you know they see my mother level, as we are stepping into it at this level, we are stepping into it with a smarter sense of responsibility and we're not trying to make the same mistakes so we make for 2019 2020 is supposed better now we're supposed to see the improvement we're supposed to talk on, so that our government when they watch us so go no say we serve they follow them bumper to bumper and that's now why on top of this particular edition part one part two call it any which one you want to call it but on top of this particular edition we get an in-house analyst from our sister station nigeria info instead of now person where they look at the political arena and then they watch they monitor everything as it is happen none other for inside the building we get none other than sheriff quadri in the building good morning sheriff good morning first of all make an announcement make i tell you happy new year yeah, happy new year to you how too. 2019 be day for you uh 2019 it, it was a quite an interesting year what? very very interesting we've had all sides of uh, the space the bad the good the ugly everything in 2019 so i would say it's just it's been tough. 2019 has been tough. It's a, it, it was a trying moment in the national life of Nigeria. Mm. If we can survive 2019, the way we've survived it, I think we can survive any other year. I like, I like the way they're quite hopeful. Now, we could start by looking at the speech where our president, he may come this time, he may, not, he may come today, he also may come this time last year, which was New Year's Day as well. And uh, for the speech of last year, he will come out talk some kind things where he be doing go do for the new year. It can't be less than an action package. But Nigerians come they talk and say the body language, when that time reached for the action to take place, it can't be less than they see comedy. It can't be less than they see stunts. It can't be less than the thing we're supposed to see at the end, we no not see them. Um, let's start with some of the things we happened for 2019, starting right. with the New Year's broadcast where President talked for 2019. Right. Well, talking about the New Year broadcast, every mm. government, yes. every president, yes. the state governors, they have their broadcast that they do on New Year's Day. Uh, the president uh, had his own as well, and it was quite an interesting one because he promised so many things. Now, one of those things I promised that stood out for me personally is the adherence to the rule of law. Uh, we all can see what happened you know, during the year, uh, from beginning of the year to this very moment, how, how the world has seen you know, this particular administration obey court orders. Apparently, it happened that this administration would rather obey um, international government, foreign government, than obey its own, you know, court orders given by its court. We can see that in the case of uh, Sambo Dasuke before he was eventually released. We can see that in Omo Elishore's case. We can see that in uh, IMN leader's case, Ibrahim Ezekzaki, and a whole lot of others. Abba Jalingo is there, for instance, still there. Uh, Joan Sabiri, a renowned uh, journalist, is also there as well, still in, in custody of the DSS. So, so in, in terms of obeying court order that he promised that obey the rule of law, I don't think that promise was kept. Has, has been kept so exactly. far. Now, those people you don't mention, of course, will still reach their story because their right. story also make media and it will make way for 2019. Right. Right. Now, let's look at the Chief Justice of Nigeria, who was forced to resign. We're talking about Walter Onoge and Ion Waterloo, the whole saga. It can't be like a devil gas for injunction. And looking at that and looking at um, the justice system for inside our country, what do you feel talk? A, a lot of people, a lot of things transpired within that particular event. Huh? Um, people, opinion leaders, opinion molders were saying that it was a witch hunt. Uh, the first was it? part, what, one side of it was that, okay, so the Milord Justice Honore, you know, had some accounts that he wasn't supposed to have. He didn't declare some accounts that he was supposed to declare. Then he went to court and said, look, I forgot. And people were saying that you can't forget. But can you? Uh, Maybe I can't tell you they're wrong. Yeah, but he's saying that he forgot. Wow. So, uh, well, some are saying that is human. It's mm -hmm. possible that he, indeed he forgot. But the other side of it is that a lot of people were saying that it was a witch hunt because the elections were coming at the time. So people felt that the ruling party wanted somebody at the helm of affairs who can protect their interest should the um, fallout of the elections head to the courts. You know, but as somebody the Chief that Justice can of set Nigeria, up at that time, 
um, ignorance, can that be an excuse? No, it can be. Absolutely. I mean, especially for someone with day for that profession where you the, know, the law say that law is there. The law doesn't recognize ignorance. ignorance. I mean, you, 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 you have yourself to blame. Exactly. You can't, you can't feign ignorance, especially in your kind of status. It's not allowed. And that's why people like that don't take decisions on their own. They have people that they work with. So we can't say that, you know, authoritatively that he, if he forgot, how about the people around him? Mm. So it's, it's quite dicey. It's either narrow there, but people are saying that it most likely was a move by the presidency to protect its own interests. And after know, that, following... well, we can't get a new chief justice of Nigeria. Yes, apparently. Oh, some, someone has to, you know, Take replace. over, of Yeah, and, and again, there was a backlash, a huge backlash, uh, knowing full well that Justice Onohe uh, was or is from the South-South, and his, his replacement uh, came from the north. north. And people were saying that, you know, the, the present administration is quite uh, filled with nepotism as regards, you know, equitable distribution of positions, especially high-ranking positions in government. That the, the, This admission has not done well in terms of that. Now, after that one, we'll move on to election. Ah, yes, that's Yes, we also know say election that month, the month of February. Hey, hey. First of all, we know say they've been postponed the election. Yes, by you one know, week. And that one by one week. And a lot of people come outside, they ask questions, say, why would they do that? What did they happen? They're not prepared for this. It was four years not enough to prepare us for that particular day when we get for con. Santo will never prepare for four years. Now, one week we used to adjust them. Now, what we could use the correct setting comma, we were supposed to avert since for the past four years, we'll be here that time to do them. Nigeria's election, um, it's been made unnecessarily complicated. Hmm. INEC always postpones elections, why Nigeria's election. Um, I, I, I can't explain why INEC will do that every four years. Four years. But I can say that these are things that are avoidable. So um, it was supposed to be held February 16. Mm -hmm. And I came up at the last minute to say that, look, we have to postpone this to February 23. People had traveled exactly. you know, to Prepared. their villages, their places, their places of local go and origin, exercise where their franchise. Feet, exactly, where they feed their voters' cars. And, and those people had to come back because elections had been postponed and they had to work. Nobody would stay over in their villages and say that they would wait for two weeks again to cast their ballot. And recall that it was the presidential and the National Assembly elections at the time. So a lot of people were quite interested in determining who becomes, who emerges the, the next Nigeria's president mm -hmm. then. So, so the process started with the preparation of INEC. INEC got quite a lot of money from the National Assembly oh, approved for INEC for that election. INEC gave assurances that it was ready for the election, only for INEC to postpone this. It wasn't the first time. They gave excuse that they had issues with logistics. Remember that there are places in Nigeria that you, know, you have to travel over two days. Even this last election, we had you know, ad hoc staff of INEC who had to travel on water for two days before they could get to their place of assignment. So it, it was quite hectic. We need to simplify. We need to be able to hmm. think about how we can break down our processes, not making it cumbersome. You don't, we don't have to years. go. Of course, I mean, they, Sherry, if they begin four, I mean, I know. 12 times four. I know. It's 48. I know. They had 48 months. Let's start And with, that magic, oh, the way they talk of, this solution yes, they talk of too. Yes. So for 48 months, what did they collect salary? Where do they collect money? Where yeah. do they see? Where, where they are working on to sit down and think of solution? Forty-eight months not do. So I, 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 I see. Let's. <laughs> it's sounding simple, but I want to believe that it's not simple. I want to believe that all these four years they are planning, they are putting things in place. But you know they are dealing with people. Politicians will also keep planning for that four years. They will want to evade all of these things. Uh, for instance, the electoral amendment bill is still with the president. If the president has signed that electoral amendment bill, uh, things could have been different. But now, looking at even the way the way would they vote, casting of the votes. Right. People they come outside, they ask questions because now the next um, next stage will they talk about in terms of the post litigation. Right. Now, of which we know say one of the presidential candidates, Atiku Abubakar, be the clamor say there was a means of voting by electronics, mm -hmm. an electronics means of voting, right. which is say um, which which in the come outside they talk say they use them, but then they talk say they don't use them. In 2019, now as that 2019 will be when we'll be there for the, um, were we still supposed to be voting? Thumbprints, manual, 
when we don't say other countries, we don't say we won't even be the first person right, we to will move not. away from the analog system. Yes, we because will. Because other countries have left that behind. Right. Are we still in the third world country where we go still they do mm, mm, and like this? No, we're, we're not in the third world country. And voting manually is not really that bad. It's a process. No, because when they talk of uh, accountability and transparency, right. I mean, if they come on that manual one, it go reduce the number of stolen ballot boxes. I, I totally stolen, agree. So many things, I, but they, I, go, I, they I, reduce. I, I am, I'm with you 100%. Now, my, my point is, so we have card reader machines that we can't even guarantee their effectiveness. Because one moment they will identify you, the next moment they will not recognize your fingerprint. Mm. So we, can't, we need to be able to do all of those things to be foolproof yet. Now, the next question is, if we do electronic voting, do we have the kind of human capital resources to be able to protect people's votes? Arguments have been made back and forth mm. as to if people can have one bank account, one BVN, and run bank accounts, and you know, their activities can be monitored, if banks can issue ATM cards, if banks can you know, be able to make sure that they track your spending, we can also use, we can deploy that kind of technology into our voting system to make sure that whatever it is that we do during the election period is safe and secure. But trust me, banks will tell you that the amount of cost they incur in protecting your money, my money, is so huge. I was having this discussion with somebody, and the person, the person told me that, look, we have people, we have smart people that you call them hackers, but they can tell you that it's their job. They can protect your vote. But do we have them? That's the question. Mm. Why, can't, why, why, why are the politicians not seeing that, that argument in that light, to say that, yes, we have people that can defend our vote? Because it's one thing to say that you want to do electronic voting. It's another thing to make sure that no foreign body, and when Defense. I say foreign body, I am not really talking about international countries okay, yeah. or foreign countries. I'm talking about people Us. that, do you understand, Us. have influence on the vote. Do you understand? That's well, the that, big if, if question if we, that we if have. If we want to talk about, if we want to really, really talk about the election, then you say this episode no, we won't do no, no, because it, there's it, so, it many, won't be so many angles it won't be to, to talk about. Now, moving on from there, make we look this um, um, hashtag NSAS campaign oh, yeah. with the staff last year. Uh, we know how it will go. I mean, we can't see. I mean, it's all thanks to social media. Social media now you can make people can get evidence where the people out there. We, when people see them, some human rights activists go follow up with the stories to make sure say these people were actually brought to book. Now, looking at the um, um, hashtag NSAS campaign, what thing you think say uh, we fit to do better for 2020 in terms of this police and the security agencies? We need to train our police. Are they not being trained? No, they're not. You need to see. Why do we barracks, have police college? The, you need to see the police college. No, you said that one the time state, the way the video will be go, the will go viral. The state of the police of, college. Yes, we'll you need see to him. see it. Who, who are you going to train in that kind of environment that can behave normally? You cannot train anybody in that kind of environment that will behave normally. Hmm. We need to train our police better. We need to train them on how to interact, how to relate. Now, let's not get this very wrongly. There are fantastic fantastic policemen. Oh, yes, they are. There are great police personnel mm -hmm. that we've got in this. Only that those that interact with us more are not there yet. They're not quite there yet. You should see them when they stop people on the road. Number one, police have no right, SAS or no SAS, to start checking your phone. No right, absolutely no right. Yeah, oh, see, you know but what, that's what happens. I agree with you, so they don't get right. But in a situation where you get four police people Heavily armed, that they ask you for your phone. Nobody there to rescue you. Right. You go tell me, say, I go to struggle for phone. Guy, look me, I'm not going to struggle for phone. No, I, I go give you, even I, I, I get what you're saying. Even you know. I don't say within my right, I'm right. within my right to deny you of that phone. Mm. But when I they look, say, person go shoot me, I get picky, I get children for us. <laughs> I, I, I understand, get people where I, under, they I understand for what you're saying. So, in that kind of situation, a lot of Nigerians, they only, a lot of Nigerians, but they succumb. We cannot say because we want to live and die in silence. You cannot say because you want, to, you want to go back to your kids, to your husband, to your wife, to your friends, and then now surrender what you were born with. Naturally, that's your right. Nobody should take your right away from you. Mm. If any police try to infringe on your right, try as much as possible to be civil. Because sometimes they can be very aggressive and very rude and very, very uncalled. They can be 
very, very uncivilized. Un I've had my own yes, fair share, yes. you know. But try as much as sort of a civil and make sure you, you follow it to some point where you can see a superior. If you, if you try and get as much information as you can, their name, description, all of those things. I mean, look at NSAS. People just didn't go on social media and start crying NSAS. It became so terrible. And that's is, because they've been, still, they've been, they've been, they've they've been getting away with it. You remember that when, when, the, when the noise became so loud, then the hierarchy of the police waded into it. And they are now more careful. Even SAS themselves are now more careful now because they know that somebody might just be recording them. They yeah, but now, now the other angle I won't come because if they find out to you they record them, they go seize whatever gadget you're using. Okay, so I mean, I'm a typical example. It happened to me for inside one of the big malls where I did try park, and then somehow I was trying to record as my own evidence, and the, the phone was taken away from me. Yeah, so again, it depends on how you do the recording, where you do the recording. The opposition, and your as location. you're publicly, people they see, they look, they right. see. I mean, you have stand, stand, uh, st stand a buyer, but again, when I buy, those people that are watching and seeing yeah. the whole situation yeah. happen. So, just because of say these people they carry gun, yeah, that's not why a lot of people they fear. So, that, that's the problem we have. Number one, number one is that we're not supposed to be that scared. Hmm. We're not in America when the police were trying to, 2020. you know. You know wait, New now, the, wait, the American where when the, life where, too sweet when too. black people were feeling marginalized and oppressed, what did they do? They went on the streets. They marched, they protested. The authorities listened. I wanted to protest because when you reach protest, now you're not going to for our country. We, see, uh, we're not calling for violent protests. We're mm. calling for Even people to stand up for their rights. You can do it. We can do it. Okay. And I, I think they are listening because NSAS is they getting watch. louder and louder by the day. Remember there was a reform that said that they would change their name. But then how about the people? Is that the solution? Something more concrete needs to be done. 2019 has been a fabulous year. We will reach the level of minimum wage because we will not say that minimum wage. As I tell you, the start time, you work out for laws, even enter 2020 right. as we speak. So right. make we look the new one of um, the one of federal government, the NGF, and um, okay, that's still under the minimum wage. Elza Zaki. Oh yeah. The story, the situation, the hope, the plan. So it, it all started when the Islamic uh, movement in Nigeria, IMN, they were doing their annual um, Hashra procession. And uh, the chief of army staff, Lieutenant Colonel Tukavrate, was uh, en route, that same location. And the IMN guys, they were many, they're always many. And when they are doing their procession, everywhere is shut down. Oh, yeah. And the um, COAS was trying to, I mean, the video surfaced online, it was trying to. Um, talk with them, dialogue with them, to let him pass. But they're saying that he cannot pass because there's no way for them to go. And it quickly degenerated. It resulted into violence. People were killed. Mm -hmm. IMM members were killed, mm -hmm. hundreds of them. Afterwards, they went, the army went to the IMN base, burnt down the old place, killed people as well. Um, it, 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 it was messy. The, the story is that he was messy. picked up. Some of his children were killed as well. So he was picked up. The wife was picked up. Uh, the case went to court. Um, human rights from all over the world, human activists waded into it. It became mm. very messy for the federal government. There were um, court orders back to back, back to back, but the government kept holding him. There were two cases, one with the Kaduna state government and the other one with the federal government. He was being accused of treason, of plan to overtake, overtake uh, the, government. The, the, the government, overthrow the government. And, and it, 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 it's, it's, so here is, here is the argument. If you claim that they were doing religious procession and they're disturbing your movement. Have you tried to pass through Lagos Ibadan Expressway before? Maybe on a first Friday or first Saturday of the month? Have you tried to see how religious worship centers along that route can cause traffic gridlock? Would you say because it cause traffic gridlock, you carry gun and start shooting down people? We need to be able to start recognizing that people have human rights. We need, as a country, to be able to see people as humans first and not enemies. If we start doing that, I think we're on the right path. But for now, this current government needs to convince a whole lot of people. I mean, look at the, the, the recent advisory released by the US government. They put Nigeria, Nigeria. on the watch list of a country with religious yeah. persecution. Oh, yeah. And that is not because of any other thing other than the Ozakzaki issue. El Zagzaki is a Muslim. 
His religious sect is a Muslim sect. They are Shiites, only that they are minority in Lagos, uh, in, in Nigeria. The current government, Nigeria in general, is dominated by Sunnis. So we have the Shiites and the Sunnis. Their rivalry is world over. Mm. And that rivalry has been brought to Nigeria. Nigeria as well. That is what is playing out. Uh, all right, let's move on from there. Now, looking at the federal government and ASU, knowing how it, it all happened in 2019, knowing the strike where they began the three-month strike, and knowing how towards the end of 2019, federal government can they tell ASU, say, make UNA staff, make UNA members, make them come register under the IPPIS system. That is for their payroll. Right. And we see how back and forth, some people go say, no, 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 they don't under ASU. So we can't care, say, some people use backyard door. Go register. For this IP, IP, IPPIS system, because federal government come and come and say, anybody no no we know they under this umbrella, no go fee collect in money. As to they come and say, talk say federal government not supposed to choke mouth on top because then get then know as they take pay their own people and um, every each side get their valid reasons. Right. But looking at how we did now because it don't they enter it don't enter twenty twenty already mm -hmm. and right now we don't they hear of strike we go share they come January sixth right. if things do not go so well. Right. So here is the problem with that. Um, or should I say here is the issue, maybe not a problem. Mm. Federal government is saying that we need to sanitize payroll. There are so many things going wrong in the university system. Okay. Um, there are people getting salaries, there are people getting money that they're not supposed to be getting. They're claiming that some lecturers will lecture here, go to another federal university or federal institution to go and lecture and still be on the payroll of those institutions. And they're is saying that you that? cannot do that. You are one person. You are under one government. So you cannot collect salaries in multiple places. You are a staff of, let's say, University of Wazobia. You cannot go to University of Nigeria Info to go and be on that payroll, on the payroll of that university again, and be collecting double salaries. So I'm saying that. And as we're saying, that is not the situation. We have some special responsibilities. For instance, if they go out to go and supervise you know, a project schools, or, yeah. or they go and visit with the university, they need to be paid some allowances. And the IPPIS as a system, and by the way, that system is not new. We only adopted it from other countries that yes. are using it. So that system doesn't actually capture accurately the works that the university lecturers and professors do. And they're saying that we can come up with another system that can capture all of these things that we do, apart we from being... We can modify, basically we can yeah, modify modif exactly. IPPIS and, and bring it to our own Nigerian ex setting. Exactly. Now, we think as to the commerce that they clamor for. But federal government, they talk saying they he. Exactly. It is what it is, and we have to follow the standards. And we need to settle this as quickly as possible, because mm -hmm. this is another big danger, especially in our education sector, that is in comatose already. We need to mm. begin. To, I mean, I get what, where the present government is coming from. They need to, because there is scarce resources. They need to save as many monies as possible. But as to, to I get where they are coming from to say that, I mean, you cannot really, there's no way in the world, let's say that, there's no way in the world that you, have to, you can stifle the university system. You cannot do that. Otherwise, because that's the bedrock of your development. That's where researches happen. That's where, you know, funding, real funding, go into it because from there they can come up with new ideas another question is are our universities doing all of this now the question i want to ask you because uh, according to the even part they talk our educational sector is in shambles mm -hmm. as we speak okay let's move on from there let's look at the minimum wage because right now we know say nlc is um is a partial state government bumper to bumper back to back some states already started to pay some states if federal government even come outside talks they go pay in arrears Many say they go back data until the time. But looking at us, some states never even set up committee we go negotiate with some of the workers for those states. Can we say that this government or the governors for those states actually have the people at heart? Uh, okay. Let me not answer that question. <laughs> Let's leave it to the people to answer. Let me tackle the negotiation part of it. So there is a central template from the federal government, 30,000 era minimum wage. The main problem right now is the consequential adjustment. The 30,000 Naira is the lowest level. So the consequential adjustment is from the other levels, two, three, four, five, to like 16, 17. And the states are saying, we don't have that kind of money. I mean, look Except at it, the, look at the, it, the, exactly. The levels. Look at it, when it was 18,000 Naira, they couldn't pay. Some were owing as much as 30 months. Mm -hmm. Who owes workers that kind of money? 
and we're saying they should come. Now, the other argument of this is these governors, they collect what is called security votes. Vote. <laughs> so can't they truly use this money for security of lives and property by paying their workers? Oh, no. Well, they will tell you, say, they're fit, they're fit to come out and talk, say, um, they're securing lives and properties. So the security of the What state. lives and properties are they, are they securing? Only it's all there. Can we, we, we can see. Mm. There is no securing anywhere. Mm. The monies are running into tens of billions of naira. <laughs> I mean, right. a state government, a state governor can take as much as three hundred. Wow! All right, the very last, the very last one we'll get on top twenty nineteen in retrospect. Now, from um, the buffet of tilapia to the bucket of pala, we're talking about none other than Ojo's Okalu and the twelve years we didn't give. And we did just hammer around. Some people saying that small things. Some people say it's well deserved. Some people they wonder whether justice don't prevail at last. I would say, I would say it's, a, it's a very good move. It's a very good step in the right direction. We need more of this to happen. Uh, EFCC 2019 has been very effective. The fight against fraud, fight against investment, cyber crime has been quite, quite commendable. We have to give EFCC that. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that is worth of no, worthy of note that they've been able to go after you know, fraud extensively. Albeit, some people are saying that uh, yeah, they're doing those to opposition. But look at Ojiz Okalu. Ojiz Okalu is not in the opposition. He's in the current government. He's the current party, the ruling party. And he's, he's in prison. He appealed for bail, and uh, the, the judge denied him bail. Yeah, so you, you, can, you can say that EFCC has done well And in, in colleagues, they come and say, talks, nobody, nobody go occupy the space until certain terms or whatever it is that they decide to do. Yeah, I, I'm sure they have their... Their rules. Standing rules. Yeah, the standing rules. So I, I don't know what the standing rules say in that aspect. But one thing I do know is that the constituents of Oji Kalu are losing out. <laughs> they are the ones losing out right now. However, they want to resolve it. It should be resolved as soon as possible. As soon as possible. So For that those benefits. people can be represented. All right. Now, looking at 2020, we will not enter. So full-fledged, we are into it as a speak. What do you think, say, the government fit to do to improve the lives of Nigerians? Uh, first and foremost, what are your expectations? I expect that uh, the economy will be improved. If people have disposable incomes, reasonable disposable incomes, then income, then they, they we can expect massive improvement in the economy. People are not afraid to go to the market to buy food. They can buy clothes. They can afford housing without sweating out that much then we can expect an improvement, overall improvement in the policy. Then electricity. We mm. need, this government need to take the bull by the horn mm. and approach electricity. Yes, we've signed contracts mm -hmm. with companies. We, we've, we've gone, mm. they've made steps, but we cannot trust in those steps until we begin to see electricity in our homes 24-7. That's when we can see them. The another thing that the government can look at is to stop gas flaring. We are wasting billions. Billions, yes. It was in the papers last year. For billions on gas flaring. Yeah. We can simply just go, put up uh, a power generating company near the gas flaring sites, construct something. It's it's doable. It's not rocket it's, it's, science. It's, see, Dubai is not is not the population of Dubai is not as much as Lagos. Dubai has sufficient power. I mean, it's, it, it's not even up to, it's not even more than a local government in Lagos ah, State. Sherry, and they have we, enough power. If we sit power. down and talk about so why can't we do it? Own? Why can't we do mm. it? Thank you so much, Sherry. for coming pleasure. inside the studio it's this morning. Pleasure. I wish you a happy new year once again. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.